everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. And here's the video so many of you have been asking um, when I was going to post my retreat. I get an email almost every day saying, is your retreat stuff ready? Um, and so here's your first one. So this is not a sneak peek of retreat because um, to see the projects that we will do in retreat, the only way you get to see them, well, there's two ways. Um, is sign up for the retreat and I will have um, three different purchase options. It's all online. Um, so you'll be able to get the whole bundle. And if you get that, then you'll get some free stuff. Um, you'll be able to just choose one stamp set of the three. Or if you're on my team, then you get to see all the videos for free. I guess I have four ways because there will be videos only. And those are especially for those of you that live um, not in the US. So I'm gonna show you real quick um, what we're using. It's going to be different because it is the art of stamping. It is. I won't say it's not for beginners because it's gonna, not, nothing's going to be hard, but you do need um, several tools and things to be able to do it. You'll need a stamp apparatus. We're going to do some heat embossing. Um, so because of the amount of things that you need, and you don't have to have it all, you can substitute. You know, I'm a big fan of um, switching things over. That's a whole theme of our club is that there's always an alternate something that you can do. Um, but you're gonna need a cut, and a, a cut and emboss machine. So in that aspect, as long as you have the things, you'll be able to do it. But if you're just starting out and you wanna do it, then email me and we'll work on what you really, really need. I haven't done the project yet, so I'm not 100% certain, but I know there will be heat embossing. There may be some foiling. Um, and again, that would be an optional add-on if you wanna put it on your card because it could live without it. Um, We'll use blending brushes, but if you get one of the kits, that's included in the kit. So it's it's going to be super fun. And you know, that series that I've been doing on the art of stamping has been a huge hit. Literally every day I get probably three or four emails from you all telling me how much you're enjoying it. So that's why I went ahead and went with that theme. Um, not nervous, but I'm thinking what may have I gotten myself into because we're going to do nine projects. Um... And last time, normally in retreat, we do 12, but we're going to do nine because these will all take a little bit longer. And I don't want to, my phone for one would go on fire and fill up all the way if I tried to do 12 longer um, tutorials. So it's online. The way my retreats work is they happen over a weekend, but um, you don't have to be there that weekend because once you're in the retreat, then you can always go back and watch the tutorials anytime. But you'll have your supplies before retreat weekend, um, which is I think the third weekend in September I should have looked. Um, so you'll get that. I have a busy time coming up. So here's what we're gonna do. There's three stamp sets. Like I said, you can get the whole bundle. You may already have some of the stamp sets. You do not have the dies. Um, I guess there's a chance that a couple of demonstrators could have them, but you don't. So when I chose them, I chose, I knew that I'd wanna do some coloring in. I knew that we'd wanna use the stamp apparatus like I did on some of the past ones where we would need some bold designs. Um, and then I wanted some that would lend themselves well to heat embossing. And then Stampin' Up! came up with a promotion. And these are going to be dies that are available in September. Unless you're a demonstrator, you can get them now. Um, but they're while supplies last. So I'm, we're going to have registration for the treat. And then I'm going to order them as soon as I can in September. So there's no chance that they're gone. You'll only be able to get them in September. So let's look at the stamps and the dies. So you have until the end of this month to sign up. So if you want to wait until after I do the two preview videos with these others. So you can see if you like the stamps and the dies or not. That's fine. Um, the retreat can't fill up because it's. I've never gotten close to my retreats filling up. So um, the first one is Waterfall Canyon. Of course, this is the one where we're going to be able to put the colors on. Um, I got, chose it because it's very different. Um, and the stamps are the reversible, so you can stamp on both sides of them. So we'll have a super good time with this. And then wait till you see the dies that they came out to go with these. Look how many you get. So we have the trees and the grass and flowers and um, boulders and a bridge. So there, this will be a ton of fun. I can't. I was gonna use this one first, but I have camp tomorrow, and I wanted to make. They're gonna get a sneak peek because the one I'm I'm doing now will be a camp project for them tomorrow. Then I went with trimming in the tree. Obviously, this is the one that we can use the embossing on because to get those lights 
and ornaments and things on it'll lend itself really really well to some heat embossing so it is an annual catalog set so if you're like i don't remember seeing that it's probably because the annual catalog comes out and you don't look at the christmas things and then here are the dies and again you can see where we'll be able to emboss we'll be able to use um layers of colors look at this little basket that they go in the dies on all of these add-on dies are super fun there is a set with the piggies I debated whether or not to put the piggies in my retreat but uh, they didn't really work with um, the art of stamping because they're cute little cartoon pigs <laughs> so but the dies that go with those pigs if you have the pigs and there's dies that go with the Yeti so the one I'm gonna use today is Apple Harvest so this is in the stamp set is in the um, holiday catalog and then here are the dies that I'm not using so look how many dies are still on this and I'm not using them on my card and I'm using a bunch of dies so because it's a die promotion uh, the dies like I said are really great dies all the cards I've been creating are on here so let's get going on it so this is a little bit it, it's like half the art of stamping I didn't want to use up any I, I have I have two really good ideas with this stamp set, but I didn't want to use them up when I was doing um, a video for this. So it's got, it's got a twist of the art of stamping and we're gonna do some heat embossing. So this is soft suede and then these are shimmer white. And then this, we're gonna use a couple of strips of the metallic gold, the brushed metallic gold. Right now it's free because this is one of the add-ons for celebration. So if you choose the brushed gold metallic for your um, celebration thing, then if you do this class, um, then you'll be able to recreate this card later with some free paper. So this is just, I think this is like three by four and you're able to get everything you need on here. So the only stamps, I'm going to use the sentiment and then the apple. So I'm going to stamp my apple in soft sea foam because I don't really want to see it. I want to see it in a minute, but I don't want to see it. Um, I don't want it, the outline to be on my card. I thought about it doing it in soft suede so if you if no line watercolor makes you nervous then do um, some suede look how pretty that is after I did that I was like oh I could do just something really simple but I didn't I went with what was um, in my head so let's pull this over here and then we'll do all these dies so we have got the apple And then the branch. So we have the apple and I'm putting that on there first, obviously, because it's got to be where it's got to be. So then I stuck the branch on here and don't want to move my apple. And then all, not all the leaves, because you saw on that paper, there's still leaves left, but I thought this was enough. Actually, when I was done, I could have put all the leaves on. So go crazy, put all the leaves on if you want, but I'm going to just do the ones I did before. My kitten is playing with her toy on the floor. So if you hear scraping, that's what that noise is. So there we go with that, and I'm gonna roll these through. Now we're gonna use two of the other dies that are in here, and I'm going to do it the same way I did it the first time. It makes me a little bit nervous, but it went okay. And because this paper would be free, and it's not a very big piece if you mess up, because I'm gonna cut this out, and then I'm going to put the sentiment on it. So you know, it's easier sometimes to stamp, but it's just kind of out of order. And then wait till you see how much fun this one is. This is a really, really fun die. So my, it's, I think it must be six inches long. My paper's cut a little bit short, but the card's only five and a half, so it doesn't matter. So just run these through. So this one does a really cute little banner that fits two of the sentiments that are in the set. You can see it punches out really well. Just gotta get those. This is seen better days. Once your um, plates start getting cuts on them, then you can see your stuff sticks. So here is this one. So you might think that it's gonna make this, and it can make that, but it really makes that. Isn't that fun? So it's really, really dainty. I should have put some adhesive sheets on it, which I just realized because after I did it the first time, I thought, oh, I should have used adhesive sheets, but I didn't have any sitting here and then I forgot to go get them. So it's okay, we'll make it work with glue. But if you have adhesive sheets, this is definitely one of the dies that you would wanna do it on. Color our card, which is where the fun in this one lays. This is why um, we'll do lots of layerings, uh, layering of colors 
and lots of different techniques in the class. And then I'll tell you like, if we do this technique and then you don't have the stuff to do the next one, I will tell you the ones that you can kind of go back and forth on. So for this one, I am going to use a water painter. If you have the old aqua painters, those will, will work as well. Um, so I am using, this is the medium one because we're just gonna swash on a lot of color. And I don't have the water in the tube because on this one, I wanna kind of control the water. And so I'm just going to dip into my fun little Stampin' Up mug and then hope that I don't drink out of it. How many of you do that when you put water in a real mug? Yeah. So I'm just gonna take and get my brush wet and we're gonna start with Parakeet Party. So just squish your lid down, have some paint ready in the top of that. And then I'm going to add, I want my card, my apple to be wet. And I'm just gonna do the apple part first. That way it won't bleed as much into the leaves. And I'm not gonna go right up to the edge either because then it won't blend, up, blend over. But this will help the paint move a little bit. So grab your, and you can see how it kind of moves into where the water is. See how it's moving. So then you don't end up with one splotch on your paper or you first touch your brush down. And then I'm gonna kind of keep that a little bit light in the center. So I'm gonna try, sometimes when I'm talking to y'all, I forget what I really wanna do. So I'll keep that part white and if I go back over it, then you can be like, oh, she said she wasn't going to. So we have that. So there's our first little layer of um, parakeet. Now, if you don't have parakeet, you could try granny apple. This is just a really bright color. I think it makes a happy card. And now I'm going to get another little section where it goes a little bit darker. And over on this side and don't hit my little white spot. You can see now that the water's soaking into the paper. I don't get as much movement, but that's okay because we've got color down. So it's not gonna do one giant splotch, especially in this color. Now I'm gonna take my brush while it's just got a tiny bit and just fill in my leaves. So we've got those. I'm gonna leave that open in case we need some more. Now I'm gonna to move to shaded spruce, which is a dark color, look how dark that is. So for this, this time I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna put a little bit of dab of this in here to kind of work with this um, little petal to start. And then I want one side to have the shaded spruce. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing where I've got a little bit more water. And we'll let that go around there. Get this part here. I want my apple overall to be the parakeet. So now I'm just going to kind of let that water go. Oh, and look, I remembered not to <laughs> get that. And it, you're, it, you want it to look watercolored. You're not going for super realistic. Now in here where it's super, super dark, I'm just gonna get a little bit more, look how much darker that is. And you can see it's still moving in that water. I'm gonna kind of pull that down so it has a little bit more shading. And then over on this side, I just want it up around to the leaf. And kind of let that in dangerously close to my white section. If you use watercolor paper, you can always go back and pick the, the color up. It's harder on the shimmer white. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to let this dry and we'll go on to the next step and then it we'll look at our apple and see if we need to change anything to that. So I'm going to start again on these leaves. We're going to start with our lightest color which is kind of shocking, but I'm gonna use papaya because I want there to be a little bit of pop of um, color in it where maybe the leaf has gotten old and I don't want it to be dead. 
and I'm not going to do it on all my leaves. So I'm just going to give some brushes on those. So we'll just go with that. And again, I'm going to leave these open because we may come back to them. Now let's do a little bit of the color I used the least, least on my leaves was the parakeet. But I'm just going to kind of pull this in on a couple of them. You want all your leaves to look a little bit dark, uh, different. And it's partly because in nature, all the leaves would be different, but also as the light catches them, the color would be different. Now I've got old olive. And kind of pull that on some of them. And then with my old olive, I'm going to go over here. Now this is going to not really show up as far as the, the veins on the leaf and the stamping. So I just covered them up with these other leaves because you kind of lose the detail. You could go back and put it in if you're just doing no line watercolor and you don't have the dye. But because we have the dyes, this will be our background leaf and then we'll have a, another one. So I've got the leaf. Okay, so we've got those. Now I'm gonna do my shaded spruce. This is one of my favorite colors. I mean, just look at that. How can you not love that? And look at those two colors together. And you can see as they mix what they do. And you wanna make sure that you have those veins showing because that's kind of where the, the pretty part of this is. Okay, now on a couple of them, I'm going to flip them over. So the ones that you're just kind of like not sold on, go ahead and flip those over. So you see that. And then I'm gonna go from darkest to lightest on these. And I'm gonna add a really dark coat there of the shaded spruce. And then this one again, not doing it for me as much as the others. And you can see how it seeps through. But we're just gonna let those really be highlighted on these. And then you just kind of play with them. You don't want to overthink it because when you put them on the card, they all become leaves. Now I'm going to go with my soft suede, which is the color of the background of my card. We need the soft suede to be our branch. So I'm going to do one kind of very watery section on there and then I'm going to come over here where I've got this and you've got your little stem and then the leaves are hooked to it and then I'm going to kind of use this to be the the other color so no matter what leaf I put on top of here it will look different because none of our leaves are suede and I'll kind of get the water out of this when I film, I put way more water in my lids than I do when I'm just painting. So you don't want to shut your pad and have it be full of water. So you can see I'm just kind of laying to the side. And then when I'm done in just a second, the ones that have too much water, like this one's fine. I didn't put any water in it, but you just don't want to close it. And you can see how they just get prettier and prettier. I was kind of going for, like in my mind, how many of your grandparents or maybe you or your parents just had kind of like those velvet, not necessarily a velvet painting, but um, you know, the ones, the a vintage painting where the colors were kind of a vintage watercolor. That's kind of the feel I was going for. And then to brighten these back up, we can just go through here and take this swashes of ink. And you can see when you put the peacock back over the top of the dark things, it's no longer just peacocks. So you don't have to worry about it. 
And then I'm gonna come over here where this is bled a little bit. Now that it's not as wet, we can get and go in for our final shading. My other card when I did it, I didn't need to do this step, but I had also not been talking. So it's a little bit easier to do when you're concentrating on painting and not what you're saying as well. But this time my brush is pretty dry. I'm just using the water that has gotten into the lid from the other times. And then I also won't have to wash this one out because now it's dry. And then we'll go back over with this. I want just a, a couple of places where it kind of pops with the shaded spruce. And now that my brush is dry, I can get that up here. See how just the more you layer color, the prettier it gets, but you have to use, I'm probably about to the point where I need to stop with the shimmer white because it will start to pill. With watercolor cardstock, you can keep going for layers upon layers upon layers. So that's pretty good. I think the only one that has too much water in it now is this one. And that's okay because we need to grab a little bit more and just get a couple of like shaded parts on here. Because again, I want, I'm not going for realistic. I'm going for vintage watercolor. I'm going to just set these aside. It doesn't take very long to dry, but look how much fun those are. Then I'm going to take, we're going to do a little bit of heat embossing. So you need a Versamark pad, which you will need if you do the retreat or a form of embossing pad that is um, clear. And then it comes with this fun little texture thing, which I have some super cool ideas for this. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to add one more on this one that I did on my original card because I think it needed a little bit more. And then I'm going to flip it the other way so it doesn't look exactly the same. And add them here. And then we'll see how I do with my words. So I have my words, which are just the right length. Yeah, look how messy my hands are. Of the little banner that we cut out. So you want to make sure that you don't put too much because stamping on any of our foils, it's a little bit slippery. So just put it on and don't rock it, but you can see it sticks. If I was you, I would stamp this first and then um, cut it out with the dye. Let's put our powder on. I'm going to go with gold. And make sure that you get, <laughs> it's driving me crazy, um, all the powder off because on this, it makes it look like it's kind of imprinted in. And if you have a bunch of extra um, powder floating around, it will ruin the words. You can use the embossing buddy, which I should have. I had it laying right here. See, I was going to use it, but talking. And then I have no idea where I put this. And because my hands are kind of wet, you can see there's a couple of places on here where it's fingerprints and one place where I caught the edge. So, you know, the embossing toolkit comes with the brush, which, you know, I use all the time to get that back into the bottle. But you can also use it to just wipe off any areas where you don't want that showing. So, just go in there where I press too hard. On this one, it doesn't matter as much if there's some fl um, little flakes of gold because it kind of just goes with that rustic look. together so I have my soft suede and then I have my little dye that I should have put some adhesive shoots on but if you don't have adhesive shoots just go ahead and use your fine tip glue but it's going to take a second for it to dry so I'm going to put it on here first 
And you can see that it's, it, I think it's probably six inches long. Maybe, yeah, it's about six. Um, so you have plenty to work with. So you have a place to hold your hands and then you don't want too much on here. Just kind of lightly touch it. Because while it dries clear, it will have a little bit of a shimmer to it if it oozes out anywhere. So I'm just gonna lay this on here. I'm going to try to, there we go, try to get one loop at the top. So that's pretty good. And then I always like to take a stamp pad or something that's laying pretty well. My other one did not. Um, I'm gonna let that sit while we do this next part. So here's our card. So I'm going to start with my branch and then build everything off of this. I don't know if you guys can see my stack of stamp pads. So I'm just gonna, and I would, did not wanna use sticky strip on this when I was thinking that I should use it on the other. I knew I wouldn't use it on this because I like for it to have that 3D effect. And if you put sticky strip, then it's going to stick everywhere. So add that. Now our apple is obviously large enough that I can use adhesive. If you're using green glue, you can um, glue this as well, but so I want it to look like this is coming off the branch. So stick that there. And then pick the two um, leaves that you're gonna put on these two first. So we need a larger one and a smaller one. So let's get this small one here. And I'm going to use glue again so it doesn't stick the whole way because I want it to have a little bit of lift. So I'm gonna cover that one kind of half up. This one here needs to be covered up all the way though. So I'm gonna get one that looks the most different from my flower, which is probably this one because it had a lot of olive on it and the flower is not olive. And for this one, I did kind of aim it so it's mostly over that because like I said, you lose a lot of definition on that one. You lose it on this one too, but I went with lighter colors. So we got that. Then we have four more and there, there are three more leaves that come in the dies. So if you're doing this, I would go ahead and do all of them because they'll look, they'll look fine on here. I just didn't know when I was doing it. Now this one, I can kind of pick which way I want to go. And the fun thing about once they've gotten this wet and they have those little holes in them, you can kind of bend them. So we can go that way or this way. Let's go this way. And then you want them to look where they're coming off of the points of your branch. Obviously this one has to go that way because we didn't color both sides. But just kind of bend them up on that seam. So we've got that one or that one. These are so much darker than my other ones. Someday I could do a contest. Guess which ones I did when filming? Because they're always just so much darker. And then we'll get this one. Put that there. Okay, now you want to take this and just snip those ends off. No time, I did not do a time elapse. So this is however long it took that to set. It's such a fine little die, isn't it beautiful? And then I'm gonna use um, my Seal Plus on this because it's been heat embossed and you can see that it's kind of curling. But once it grips this, we're good. So we have that. And then I'm gonna use my Seal Plus on here. Otherwise you'll have to glue this because the um, combination of being heat embossed and having the um, having it be foil and that it's kind of a funky background on the back of our foil. So got that. And then for um, a couple of other just small touches, you could leave it, 
And you could do this with a lot of colors, but partly because your hands are dirty, um, and how many times do we get a slight little smudge, or there may be little bits of gold. So this just kind of adds to that overall effect of um, it being vintage and old. And So I'm gonna take my blend, and I'm gonna really do a target. I'm not gonna go all, all over the card, so hold it a little bit closer than you do when you do this normally. So there's my parakeet. And then I have my dark spruce. And if your card's pristine and there's no smudges, you don't have to do this. It would also look pretty to do it with a little bit of suede. So we have that. And then for the embellishments on this, I went with our um, for fl flower adhesive back trinkets. I have tons of them left and they got um, smushed when I did my try it class because I order tons and tons and tons of paper and they were on the bottom of the paper, but they still work. And I like to glue them because they're heavy. That's why they fall off the backing. Plus, you know, they were delivered when it was a million degrees outside. So I'm gonna do five. So I'm gonna, there's three colors. There's like a gold and then there are Uh, kind of a bronzy color and then the silver. I don't want the silver. So there's one. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? I know it's hard to see the embossing. You can see it in real life. It's hard to catch it on camera. Now you want to see my one that is not as dark as this one. My flower, everything's just a little bit lighter because <laughs> I was not talking, concentrating on the painting, but they're all going to be super pretty. This one had a couple more smudges um, on it, so I hit it a little bit stronger with that blend and it covers it right up. And then, which is my first one, this one, um, you have this strip here. This is how our beautiful little thing cuts out. So you end up with these two pieces. This one's kind of, if you want to use it for waves or something, you could, but on this one, I just added it to the inside. Then if you want to also emboss another sentiment on the inside in gold, it's so pretty. So if you're interested in signing up for my retreat, just head to my website. Um, it will be in the posts that go along with all of these, and then there will be a link at the top as we go through. Registration will end towards the end of August. Um, and then, like I said, it, the retreat itself takes place in September, but it's online, so you just do it whenever it suits you. If you wanna get together with people that weekend and do it, you can, or you can just kinda do it at your own pace. Everybody have a great day, bye.